In my other video for this lesson, I uh, dealt with the first question in the text, uh, which talked about the inverse relationship between uh, sound wave length and frequency. So in the, since the other two questions both talk about Ohm's law, which is a comparison between the resistance and current and voltage in a circuit, I figured I'd spend a little bit of time talking about that uh, with the extra time I have in the second video. Ohm's law uh, basically tells us how to compare the pressure sort of uh, of electricity going through a uh, going through a circuit to the volume of electricity going through the circuit to the resistance that that electricity runs into as it tries to go through the circuit or as it pushes its way through uh, the pressure of electricity sort of like a sort of well actually a lot like water pressure is when we're talking about uh, electricity is measured in amps and that's called current so current is kind of like the electricity pressure. Electrical, there we go, pressure. And then ohms, or resistance, resistance is how hard it is for the electricity to go through. So the sort of the friction against the electricity. And then the voltage is the volume of the water. So the voltage is the volume, not really the water, the electricity. Sorry, got carried away with my uh, metaphor there. So you can imagine this, um, and it really does work very similarly. You can imagine the difference here. If you have a, a circuit that has high current but low voltage, then that'd be very similar to, uh, say, a car wash sprayer. Um, a car wash sprayer has, you know, the water comes out very, very fast, but there's not all that much water. So uh, a car wash might be, you know, high current, but low voltage. Um, whereas if you took a, uh, a really big bucket of water, and you just dumped it, right? So a bucket that's dumped. It's not really going to have a whole lot of current. There's not going to be a whole lot of pressure because the water is just falling. So it's going to have a low current. But there's liable to be, depending on the size of the bucket, a lot of water falling all at once. So it's going to have a relatively high voltage. And then resistance then can be thought of as sort of the size of the hose. If you think of having a, a big hose where you have uh, a given amount of water running through it or the same amount of water running through a smaller hose, the, the water is going to have to come out of the smaller hose at a higher pressure if you're going to have the same amount of water going through it at a given time. So the resistance then would be increased as the hose size gets smaller. So now that you have sort of a feel for how that all works, let's take a look at the actual question in the text. Uh, the first one that deals with it is uh, example B. And what we're going to do is use the relationship I've written here. Um, we have V over Ri. What this tells us is that if I'm looking for any one of these three values, I basically just cover up the other one. So if I'm looking for, say, R, I would cover up the R. And what I have left is V over I. So to find resistance, I take V and divide it by I. If I was looking for voltage, voltage then, if I were covering voltage up here on top, then I'd have R and I side by side, so that would be R times I. Well, in example B, what we have is 12 volts and 2 amps, and what we're looking for is some number of ohms or some amount of resistance. So all we need to do is cover up resistance, which is leaves us with voltage over current. So we take resistance equals 12 volts over 2 amps, or 12 over 2 is 6. So our resistance then would be 6 ohms. So we can see if we have a certain amount of uh, uh, pressure divided by a certain amount of current, that tells us that there must be a specific amount of resistance to the electricity flowing through in order for 
those two things to, to be their given values.